Hey there, so today I'm going to be continuing the Shadows of the Galaxy previews. Uh, if you missed the other two parts, uh, you can go ahead and check them out. Uh, I'm just going to be continuing down the line in order of the cards that have been revealed thus far, focusing more on cards that I think will be uh, competitive in nature, especially in Constructed. And we're going to go right ahead. So the first card today is uh, Hunter. It's uh, the new leader for Green Hero. Uh, he's got an action that costs one, an exhaust, reveal a resource you control. If it shares a name with a friendly, unique unit, return the resource to its owner's hand and put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. Um, the epic action to deploy is seven, hefty. He's a 5'8", so he's got Vader level stats. Uh, he's got Overwhelm. And on attack, you may reveal the resource you control if it shares a name with a friendly, unique unit. So it's the same uh, same ability as his front, just free, just on an attack trigger. So the ability itself, it draws a card, right? So let's just pretend I've got a, a, a wedge here in play. He's a unique unit. Uh, if I have wedge in play, I can use this guy's ability. Uh, pay one, exhaust. I can reveal wedge from my resource zone. I can put Wedge then into my hand from my resource zone and replace that resource with the top card of my deck. So it's a it's like a really awkward way to draw cards, uh, requiring that you have these this match of unit in play and unit in resource. Uh, interestingly, you can't really play the card you just drew because you know you have that unique unit in play already. So it would one of you'd have to defeat one of those unique units because of the unique rule. Um, I think it's just a lot of hoops to draw, like to jump through for a draw card. Um, we noticed that like Cassian's ability is like really tough to like use a lot of the time just because it, it's like tempo negative and costs resources. So it's really awkward sometimes to fit into a curve. And I think this ability is actually a little worse than draw a card because of like the card you're drawing isn't really immediately impactful. And it's very situational, right? You need to have this like match of units, so it's hard to pull off. As far as his stats, they're really big, but seven cost is a ton. And like Vader, for instance, that costs seven. His his on attack ability is actually kind of nuts. The the deal too. Um, I don't love this guy. I, I don't I don't think this is something I'm gonna want to build around. I, I it reminds me. A little bit more of like a theme deck than it does like a competitive deck um i'm not yet seeing where this like massive synergy of having like extra copies of unique units in your hand for the ones that are in play and like why you'd want to give up so much tempo and resource equity just to draw those cards uh but there is some hope i mean draw card is still a powerful ability and if um if something is there, it's purely because of that. It's purely because it's gonna. This is gonna create some kind of card advantage engine. All right, Cripple Authority. It's a trick in Red Hero. I mean, so far, trick only really matters for Jabba, and that's in Villain. So that part of this isn't super relevant. Uh, the ability is draw a card, and then each opponent who controls more resources than you discards a card from their hand. I mean, it's a little bit of like anti ramp hate. Or it's a little bit of like, I'm playing a low curve deck and late in the game I'm going to use this because you're always going to resource past me and I'm going to start playing this. And that's where I think this is a little more interesting because the discard a card isn't super relevant until you start stacking it with more discard a card, right? So right now we even have like some strategies that involve K2 and like force surrender and force throw right like you pair a bunch of these cards together and you can put your opponent especially the opponent who's playing a slower deck into sort of a top deck situation where if they don't draw like they'll draw two cards and if they don't draw like an out that they need they can be in big trouble uh and this kind of fits into that strategy a little bit i mean at floor this is terrible right if they, if they don't have more resources than you you're paying two to draw a card which is basically paying two to replace this with a card from your the top of your deck which is awful uh if you get the discard ability it is a two for one although a very tempo negative two for one because you're not advancing the board state at all so again where i think this could see potential play is in conjunction with a lot of other discard effects in a low curve deck where you're where you're not just relying on your opponent ramping you are actually yourself stopping your resourcing uh earlier 
And there's going to be a card later, uh, just say it now, it's Wrecker, who uh, will defeat your own resources, and that he could be a top end for a deck like this. All right, Omega is a 2-2 hero yellow card. Uh, the text on it is ignore the aspect penalty of the first clone unit you uh, play each round, and then it has a when played, search the top five cards of your deck for a clone card, reveal it, and draw it. So the second half is kind of like a Mon Mothma ability. Mon Mothma is a 1-3 that does that same ability except for Rebels. Uh, Omega is a 2-2 two -two that does it for clones. I prefer the 2-2 two -two stat line to the 1-3. Uh, so that part of this ability is going to depend on how many clones we can we can put in a deck. If there are, will be, if the, they will all be units or if we might get some like events that have the clone tag that might make this a little more interesting. Uh, the first part of the text, ignore the aspect penalty of the first clone you play uh, each round. I think that's flavor text. Uh, I just can't imagine building my deck to include off aspect clones and then playing a 2-2 and thinking that somehow this 2-2 is going to stick around for me to play those off aspect clones. Um, so mostly I, I, don't, I don't see that ability being relevant at all. Uh, if it's relevant, it's because this card is just good without it, and then you, if you end up playing off aspect clones that you're okay with paying a tax for, they'll be maybe like once every so often you'll like accidentally be able to squeeze this into a curve where that uh, you'll get that discount. Uh, but for the most part, there's just no way you can build a deck around a two-two that has no defensive capabilities, and then hoping that uh, you're like you're gonna play Crosshair in your yellow-red hero deck and like n play it for four because of this card is gonna make it make it happen. Uh, I'm very dubious of that. All right, Death Watch Loyalists, uh, three-three in a hero villain. Uh, sorry, uh, red villain. It has grit and it has overwhelm. This looks like a pretty basic card, but this is one that actually interests me a little bit with Grand Inquisitor currently, uh, just because, you know, it's got the 3-3, three, three, so it can be activated immediately. Uh, the Grit will turn it into a 5-1 if you Grand Inquisitor it. It has Overwhelm. So basically, my idea would be, all right, on turn two, you do that. You slam this into whatever they played on turn two. You defeat whatever they played, and you get some splash damage onto their base. So you're basically using this as a removal that then also does damage to their base. Uh, you can also, you know, hit their base for five and leave behind a five one, which is, as long as they don't have ping abilities, is st still a pretty intimidating thing that's going to mostly uh, demand a, a one for one answer from your opponent. Uh, so yeah, like this is a pretty basic card. I don't think it really has any play outside of Grand Inquisitor. So it, if it, at least currently, right? I mean, we, we don't, there's like a bunch of new leaders we're going to get too, but at least right now, I think if this is going to see any competitive play, it'll be like solely because Grand Inquisitor. Uh, and we'll see if it like makes the cut. Still not sure because there's going to be a lot of competition for cards. Um, but yeah. All right. Echo is a 4-4 four, four and Hero Yellow. Sorry, Green Hero. Uh, it has Restore 2 and a When Played effect that you may discard a card from your hand give two experience tokens to a unit in play with the same name as a discarded card. So you have a second echo in your hand. You can discard echo to echo, give echo two experiences. You you played a four cost six, six with restore two. That's awesome. So you go, you have to go through these hoops, right? Like you're going to have to have the, the extra card of the, and it's going to have to match something in play. So that's not an easy hoop. Like that's a, that's like that's tough to pull off, but the payoff is pretty tremendous. The payoff is basically this is wing leader with just way better stats. Uh, like if you've got a like a, if your three drop is a unique unit, right? Uh, and then like you have Ezra in play or something, an extra Ezra in hand. You play Echo. You now throw your Ezra out. You you play two experience tokens on the Ezra that's in play. Uh, this guy himself being a four four restore two, slightly below curve. Right, we usually want four five, um, but four four is not embarrassing. Restore two is good, and there's a lot of upside with this ability. Uh, this is a clone I'm kind of interested in. Uh, I think we'll see how consistent this ability will be in the future. Uh, that part I can't without like testing and seeing how it feels in game is going to be hard for me to judge, but I think there's potential here. All right, Koska Reeves, uh, red hero card four five, so it does have like that premier. Uh, four cost stat line has an on attack if this unit is upgraded you may deal two damage to a ground unit 
I think this is okay. Uh, I don't think, unless throwing around upgrades on units becomes substantially easier than it is right now, which it could. This might be a little bit of an upgrade themed set. This is a Mandalorian, obviously. So uh, I think the idea here is that there will be a bunch of upgrades, but they, I think they need to be cheap and effective to be good and We'll see like how, how that plays out. I'm still not really sold on just like wanting to s like smash a bunch of upgrades in my deck and hope that like it everything like works out for me because it still puts you into situations where you're gonna be two for one in yourself if your opponent reveal removes your unit, puts you in situations where you ha where you have to like sequence in a way that isn't always effective, right? Like you you have your unit in play. Do I upgrade it before attacking? Uh, if I do. What's going to happen? Is my opponent going to then be able to answer that? Um, there's going to be more upgrade hate, theoretically. Um, the, the, the simplest way to trigger this will be with shields and experience. I think them counting as upgrades is kind of like the key here, because that doesn't really usually cost you cards a lot of the time, or at least it's like partial, like with Echo, for instance, right? You, you throw a Costco away when you play Echo and then put the two experience on the Costco you have in play. Now you've got this 6-7 that'll deal two on attack. Um, this is obviously board-centric control. It works really well in addition with uh, the the red hero, uh, Bo-Katan, because this is a Mandalorian. She'll, in a, this will be able to do teal damage to a ground unit. Her ability will do damage to units, right? It looks like the Mandalorian theme will be a lot about control, not so much face race. Uh, and we'll see if this uh, plays a major role in that. All right, Ruthlessness is a one cost red villain upgrade, Has gives the unit plus two plus zero, and then attached unit gains when this unit attacks and defeats a unit, deal two damage to the defender player's base. I don't really like this. Um, it's, try, it's a very aggressive upgrade, right? Plus two plus zero, but then it's telling you to attack units to deal damage to the defender's base, but it's not giving you any health to help you with your unit trading. Um, I think that's a little, I think it's being pulled in both directions too much. Uh, upgrades that don't give any health are also even more susceptible to getting like blown out by either removal or just their unit trading with your unit. Um, yeah, th this seems slow and it, it seems like counterintuitive to me. I think, uh, I think I'm going to pass on this at least for now. All right. Wrecker mentioned it before. Uh, Six cost hero red card. He's got the clone tag. He's a seven six overwhelmed. So that is an absolute big boy. Uh, one of the biggest six costs possible. And he has a one plate. You may defeat a friendly resource if you do deal five damage to a ground unit. That's a beating. Uh, that's an incredible ability. Defeating your own resource is bad for you. I get that. Uh, I think ideally this is just your curve topper. I think if you're playing a card like this, you probably don't want to be playing seven drops in your deck. Uh, so to you just play use this ability every time. But the amount of tempo you gain from playing this massive of a body plus dealing five to something on play, right? Like you are defeating basically any unit in play at this cost or lower, like you're going to kill their five drops. You're going to potentially blow up leaders that have taken a little bit of chip damage. Um, combine this with ambush, right? With like energy conversion lab. Uh, you're going to like def delete two things at once and deal overwhelm damage, or theoretically you can deal five to something big, right? They have a six, like a, like a five, six in play or something um, that the Mandalorian legendary that has Sentinel play this, you deal five to that guy. Uh, then you ambush him. For seven, you're gonna leak six damage into their base, defeat it, leave behind this body. I think there's so much play for that. I think this ability is tremendous. I don't think you should be too scared about defeating your own resources as long as you build your deck to uh, account for that, right? You're not curving up. You're just gonna be stopping most likely at six for him. Works well with that cripple authority trick too. You're gonna be defeating your own resources. Then you can like recoup a little bit of that like card disadvantage, right? You're gonna to need to resource again because you've now defeated your resource. But in the meantime, you can make your opponent discard a card. Um, I like this. I think this will be a core card. Uh, the stat line itself is just so big. 
Uh, this one's nifty. All right, Fennec Shand is a seven cost yellow neutral. Four, six with the uh, underworld trait, has ambush, has an on attack, deal one damage to the defender if it's a unit for each different cost amount cards in your discard pile. So it's like it shoots the thing first uh, before it completes the ambush. So if that on attack trigger defeats whatever you're attacking into, uh, Fennec won't take any damage back. This has a lot of parallels with Han Solo, right? Who also kind of like deals damage before uh, before he receives damage. So if he kills whatever he attacks, uh, he doesn't take damage. In this case, she's not doing six before, right? It's gonna depend a lot about what cards are in your discard pile, which works well with Han because his resourcing ability will then let you kind of curate what's in your discard pile. But supposing you can do three or four, if you're attacking something with three or four health, Basically, you're just killing it immediately and leaving behind this 4-6. Um, where the upside with this one is, is that she can kill really big things. Because if you have like four or five different cards in your discard pile, you can essentially do like eight to nine damage to something, right? You can kill a Vader. You can kill an Emperor Palpatine. If you have six different resource uh, costs in your, disc in your discard pile, she's going to hit for six first with the on attack trigger. And then finish the ambush for another four. And that's that's the upside here, right? It's it's the ability to kill really big things because otherwise, like Han unit is like way better, right? It, it it deals six to something, doesn't take any damage back, and leaves behind a six six. While this, if it's not killing the unit uh, with the on attack trigger, will take damage back. So yeah, like I, I think it's interesting. I think Han a Han deck could use this because it can carry that discard pile pretty well. So the ability to like blow up really big units is is important it's not like this seems to be like a leader sniper something that like most of these seven cost big things like luke and darth vader and mace and han like they actually have a hard time killing leaders because most leaders at least most of the good leaders have uh seven or more health uh but fennec can actually do that and that will be the calling card if this sees play all right another new leader boss is a red villain has an action uh deal one damage to a unit with a bounty you may give it plus one plus oh for this phase so i guess the idea of giving it plus one plus oh is if your own units have bounties on them you can kind of buff them you can deal damage and buff them um the unit uh side it costs five to flip bosk he becomes a four six pretty premium stat line only uh boba fett leader the five cost one uh has a better one uh, and he has, when you collect a bounty, you may collect that bounty again. So this is the bounty build around. And I like that it's in like a villain five cost leader is always interesting because of ramp in this game. Uh, they have super laser tech. They got resupply. There's going to be another green bounty that ramps. So this can theoretically come out on turn three. Double dipping bounties can be really strong. Uh, bounties as a whole, I mentioned in the previous video, I'm still like a little lukewarm. I think they're kind of, they're tempo negative. Uh, they require a lot of setup. I think the payoff sometimes is there, but it's, it's not smooth sailing. You have to like spend actions and cards to basically do nothing for a little bit, just to like bank value later. Uh, and a lot of time, I'm not sure that value is enough, but with Bosk, you know, that double dipping, the turn you flip them and you can double dip, depending on what we're double dipping, uh, it can be pretty massive and it can create a pretty big swing turn. So that's kind of like how, like the way like Boba Fett right now creates swing turns because of extra resources on his flip turn. Uh, Boss can create a swing turn just by creating some like giant bounty collection, right? And it only happens once per turn, but if you can do it like once on the turn you flip, then once the turn after, depending on what we're triggering, could be really fun. Uh, I think this guy looks interesting to build around, and I think, you know, like, he's just got the stat line and the cost to matter, like the 5 cost, 4, 6, and uh, because of that, uh, I think there's a lot of potential. Uh, and yeah, just one more note about his, like, front side ability. I mean, you can play bounties and then start shooting things, right? It, so, like, it's going to be interesting and might have to push, like, things with one health a little bit out of the format, just because if Bosk is very prevalent and you're just, like, bountying things that have one health and then immediately killing them and collecting your bounties, uh, that'd be interesting. 
All right, Chain Code Collector is a 4-2 with Ambush. On attack, if Defender has a bounty, it gets minus 4. Uh, it gets minus 4, minus 0 for the attack. So yeah, the idea is like it ambushes a bounty unit. It doesn't take any damage back because he shrinks it. Leaves behind a 4-2. It's okay. It looks mostly like filler to me. Uh, I think it would be pretty interesting in draft with bounties, but um, don't know if this is the kind of power level we're going to be dealing with with Constructed once we've got uh, two full sets of cards. All right, Rose Tico is a blue hero four cost unit. It has two six. It has the resistance tag, which we haven't seen be uh, very relevant yet. She comes in with a shield and has an on attack. You may defeat a shield token on a friendly unit. If you do give two experience tokens to that unit. So naturally she can defeat the shield on herself. She can also defeat other shields. Uh, you can only do it once on attack. So if, like, if she has like a bunch of shields on her, you can't like blow them all up at once. Um, you know, like, I think there's an engine here, like, theoretically, like, you, like, keep attacking, putting shields back on things, maybe with, like, Luke being able to shield units, and then, like, she grows to a 4-8, and then that, and then you put a shield on something else, and then she attacks and, like, buffs that unit. Uh, it seems like a very interesting engine, it just seems like a very slow thing, and right now, uh, the game is just, seems to be too fast for, like, engine-level builds. Either you're going under things, like, burn aggro or like you do like aggro tempo with like boba fett or you play a lot of like control style things where you like just very easily dealing with units where this this will be pretty bad i think against like a control deck it's just too slow they'll be able to interact in too many stages um i'm not super high on this but there's like there is some potential here as a build around uh but again the the, the format will need to slow down a bit and on top of slowing down, these decks are going to have to be able to kind of deal with control. And control is like really strong at dealing with dirtily mid-range that um, I don't know where this will fit in right now. Sundari Peacekeeper is a three cost green hero card. It has a 1-5 stat line with Ray 2 and Restore 2. So it attacks as a 3-5 and heals. Uh, this looks like an, a bit of an anti-aggro card. It's got a big health pool that's going to deter them from wanting to like interact with it. But then when it starts attacking, it's going to like start killing their units and healing you. Um, it's interesting that it could also like race. It's not like it is kind of aggressive in a sense too because of the raid, right? You start like hitting them for three uh, and healing. But against decks that are gonna like want to actually interact with your unit it's pretty bad because it's a one five on defense and that's like basically just free food for them um so that's why i think primarily i would want to use it as an anti-aggro card because then it's unlikely they want to interact with this and if they do you're kind of happy anyway because it means it's absorbing a bunch of damage uh moisture farmer is a one cost blue card zero four with restore two no, I don't think I want to be doing this. I guess like you can, the idea is to throw some upgrades on this, make it relevant. Uh, but no, I don't think so. Not yet. All right, top target is a one cost bounty. Uh, the unit gets plus zero plus zero and has uh, attach unit gains bounty, heal four damage from a unit or base. If this unit is unique, heal six instead. So one cost heal four or one cost heal six. If you're playing a deck that interacts with units, it seems really good when you read it, but then I think a little bit about it and I'm not, I'm a little, I'm going to be a little restrained on this just because, you know, like against decks where you want to be killing units, ideally you want to kill those units before they attack you, right? We'll go simple. They have a green squadron A-wing. You have a top target and an open fire in your hand. It's turn two. They haven't attacked with the green squadron A-Wing yet. You can open fire it and prevent three damage. Or you can put a top target on it and then not kill it. And it's going to hit you for three this turn. It's probably going to hit you three next turn. Even if it doesn't hit you three next turn, once you kill it with your open fire, you've, you healed four. So you're, you basically healed one of that, like one more than the damage it dealt you. But you have to spend an extra card and an extra action. So there's other things going on in the game at that point too. And it's kind of my general issue with bounties right now is that they're slow. They're really slow. And the ones that aren't free, there are a few that are free. And I think there's much more potential for them. Um, 
but because this one's not free, it's going to mess with your curve. Uh, you're going to play it on a unit, and ideally you want to heal your base, but that but because you played this, that unit's going to attack you now. So you've like kind of nerfed it. You've you've like kind of <laughs> the the point of healing your base. It, it like you just you just made it worse. Um, now, interesting with Bosk, right? The double collection. I mean, you can heal twelve. That seems kind of nuts. Um, so there is like, I think specifically with Boss, some of these cards can kind of really, really, you can really capitalize with them. Um, but overall, I'm a little, a little restrained on my uh, evaluation of this. I think it's interesting. I think heal six is a lot. So like, that's where I'd want to be more. I think you just. I'm just not sure it's going to line up curve wise a lot of the time. And I think maybe it's just better to like skip the bounty part and just like fight the units, just kill them before, uh, before they hurt you. All right. Dengar one cost red villain two two. When you play an upgrade on a unit, you may deal one damage to that unit. So the idea here is that, uh, you play bounties on your opponent's cards and those bounties now deal one damage. It's a two, two. It costs one. I don't. I don't like it yet. I mean, again, like it's going to depend entirely on how many bounties we want to be playing. If the bounties actually end up being good enough. Uh, with Bosk, it's interesting, right? Because you can deal one with this, and then you can deal one with Bosk, so you can kill kill like X twos. But it's just too easy to remove two twos in this game. Like, there's been there's quite a few that I think like are almost decent. But really the ones that get played are the ones that have immediate effects like spec force soldier that deletes a sentinel but like benthic two tubes who represents tons of damage doesn't see much play and you know i think this will probably end up more in that camp than the other all right punishing fire a uh, three cost villain red spaceship it has a three four stat line so that's the millennium falcon stat line at three cost when an upgraded enemy unit is defeated, you may ready this unit. Use this ability only once each round. This card, I think, is really good, even, like, without the the upgrade part. Like, 3-4 stat line is just strong, right? We like 7th Fleet Defender, which is a 3-2 shield. This is, like, similar, right? It's just a 3-4, so it's, like, that. it's assuming that shield was preventing 2 damage. This works well with Grand Inquisitor to be readied. Um, naturally, the idea here, again, is with bounties, right? You play this. You kill, you, you kill an upgraded enemy unit, right? Those are usually going to be units that you put bounties on. You ready this. You go to town. I think there is going to there is a red bounty that I think specifically with this and some like other Grand Inquisitor stuff or Bosk stuff. Like I think there's a lot of cards in that vein that are going to be useful with that red bounty. And this this card seems really important just in general because of the stat line, right? We like Millennium Falcon. This has that. The same numbers right so be on the lookout for it punishing one all right price on your head two cost bounty it's green it has attached unit gains bounty put the top card of your deck into play as a resource so this is ramp it's the ramp bounty it costs two which is one less than resupply but you know you have to kill the units so if you play this on turn one and then to kill you have to kill that unit with an event in your hand you're not gonna have a unit in play which is possible right you play this you play a three cost removal like power of the dark side or open fire well power of the dark side assuming they didn't play another unit but um in general it might not be a turn one play really but um it's like a slow resupply that costs one less and maybe there's potential there i think it's interesting with bosk because of like he can double ramp you right like you play this, you flip boss, kill that unit, you can go to seven resources immediately, and then next turn you'll be at eight. So from five to eight, not bad. I think that's pretty cool. So like boss already is the five drop, like a five cost leader in uh, red, in villain, which means like he could want to be playing super laser tech and resupply. So you can play him on turn three and then double ramp to eight. And like play some eight drop like a palpatine on turn four um that seems interesting like that that's where i like this the most with like the double ramp with boss uh, i think other than that it's like a really awkward ramp card um because like 
you're not advancing your board when you do this. So it's kind of be a little trickier to actually deal with the unit you put this on. But uh, yeah, I, I like the potential. Ramp strong. Yeah, so like we, we pay attention to ramp cards. All right, armor, five cost in uh, hero blue. It's a three, five Mandalorian. It has a one play, give a shield token to each of up to three Mandalorian units. So it gives itself a shield. If you have two other Mandalorians, that's like the dream, right? You get like a bunch of shields. Maybe with like the Rose synergy we talked about earlier, like now you've got a bunch of shields to blow up and like you're kind of, cr you've created an engine. Uh, the engine just seems, again, incredibly slow. Like, yeah, three, five shield is okay. Putting shields on a bunch of units is okay, but these units better be able to interact like really quickly and really effectively, or they're just like not gonna matter when when people are like hitting your base a bunch or just defeating these units with the removal or using board wipes. Um, like three, five for five is, is just not a good, it's stat line. So the shields are great if you can capitalize them over the course of the game. You just need to be able to capitalize with them over the course of the game. And so far, this seems again like a dirtily mid-range plan that seems too slow to deal with aggro and too slow to get under control decks so not yet seeing what the glue is here like where is the thing that's buffing everything and making it so that you can close out games with all these upgrades uh rose it's not really it right like blowing up one shield getting two experience like that's cool it's like interesting it, over the course of a few turns that can be a ton of value but um it's not quick enough yet in my mind all right new leader boba fett green hero so we've got the the hero version of boba fett now and he's he turned green he deploys at the exact same stat line as his villain version except he costs six so he's a four seven it costs six now his leader ability is when you play a unit that has one or more keywords so keywords are the like bolded words right like grit ambush sentinel right the, the, those are keywords uh so when you play one you may exhaust this leader if you do give a friendly unit plus one plus oh for this phase so notably he keeps the, the 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 tricky ability that boba uh the villain version has that it's not an action this is like a response it triggers whenever you play something that has a keyword and then you immediately give that unit plus one plus oh so you don't have to wait um it's the same ability he has when he's deployed except then it's just a static ability that gives every unit with one or more keywords plus one plus oh so this is in green and the first place I'm looking is ambush keyword because it's like the strongest keyword and it's pretty prominent among green units. And basically it says your ambush units have plus one plus oh, which I think is pretty strong. Like escort skiff is a five, four now. Uh, the rogue skirmisher, five, six. Uh, anything with energy conversion lab. So if you play double green, right? Like plus one plus oh. Uh, I can also give the buff to another unit, which I think will be more situational. Usually when you're ambushing with these cards, you're going to want to give it to the card ambushing. It's going to give all these ambush units much more like potential upside. It's cool with like Mace Windu, right? Mace comes in as a 6-7. He just like is a 6-7. And he now he can kill bigger things potentially. If he wasn't, if there was like something with 6 health, now he can kill it. Uh, that's where I like this. I think overall, I'm like not very high on this leader. Uh, I think the stat line is good, but there's not like a ton going on here. And this again, six cost leaders. I, I just like, I'm a little soured on them in the first set. I think that they've mostly just been too clunky and slow. But um, I do like the idea of like an ambush dot deck with this guy and just like, a lot of times the ambush units that their stat lines are a little weaker because of the ambush obviously so even like escort skiff is a 4-4 ambush i like that card but i've noticed that a lot of the times it just can't kill what i needed to kill right a lot of units that you'd want to kill at five health whether they're like the boba fett unit whether they're like the emperor's royal guard against palpatine uh Bay's malbus out of like control decks or chert decks like okay now your escort skiff kills all of that um you go and then you like go up the curve right like maybe we're talking like uh anything with like energy conversion lab right like maybe you're playing like a zeb and you want to ecl him 
Uh, sorry, that wouldn't really work here because Zeb's red. So uh, Wedge, Wedge Antilles, okay? You can now east, uh, energy conversion him as like a six, right? And that six, baby, can one-shot, one-tap a leader or something or kill things with six health, right? Like up the curve from there, the rogue skirmisher. Now, instead of a four-six ambush, it's a five-six ambush. And five is much better than four. It kills a lot more units. Um, I think, yeah, so like really, that's where the potential is for me. I think if you do like an ambush curve deck with the Boba leader and then that flip happens and now like your other things also get buffed that don't have ambush, then maybe we can cook something. All right, Chrysanthemum is a five cost red villain unit. It is a three seven. So hello, Grand Inquisitor. You've got a friend. Uh, when played, if an enemy unit has a bounty, you may ready this unit. And then on attack, choose a ground unit. You may deal one damage to it for each damage on this unit. It's like Grand Inquisitor's birthday party. Uh, this is, right, like the on attack trigger, it works based on how much damage is on this. So like Grand Inquisitor immediately damaging him. And then he can attack and deal two to something because he's got two damage on him. If you're playing bounties, we're going to talk about the red bounty in a second. Uh, he comes in ready already, and then he'll get multiple attacks theoretically in one turn if you're playing him with Grand Inquisitor. Uh, it's interesting because, like, I get like he's like the bounty hunter. He's going to work a lot with Bosk too because Bosk is like the the bounty leader, right? He's the one you want to put all the bounties in the deck for. But um, this in particular just looks like it's tailor made for Grand Inquisitor. Even without bounties, I'd want to play this in Grand Inquisitor. Uh, it's got a bigger uh, health pool than even Seventh Sister. It does a similar thing to her where like she hits base and hits units. Well, this guy also hits base and hits units. Now, it, it won't be three the first time, but it could be more later. But uh, I'd also be interested in like throwing some cheap bounties in to really live the dream with this guy. I'm really excited for him. And the, yeah. All right, and here's that bounty, guild target. It's a zero cost red bounty. Attach unit, gains bounty, deal two damage to a base. If this unit is unique, deal three damage instead. So it's a zero cost deal two or zero cost deal three. Both are pretty good, I mean, right? Like zero cost deal three, it's like, <laughs> we're pay we pay three for four a cause and we're happy when it deals three or four. Uh, this is zero. Uh, and then in addition, it's gonna trigger all these bounty synergies, right? Chrysanthemum. It's going to come into play ready. Punishing fire is going to ready when you kill the unit that has guild target on it. Or boss, for instance, right? You can now shoot whatever for one damage at whatever you put this on. Or on the boss flip turn, uh, this will trigger twice. They're actually doing six to their base uh, or four, right? Um, this one's interesting. I mean, the fact that this costs zero is a lot different to me than any of the ones that cost one or more. Uh, zero... Zero is broken. It's just like a broken cost, right? Um, it doesn't mean this card is broken, but this is costing zero is broken. And we're going to try to break it. We're going to try to make this work. I think it will work. And right now, with this and Punishing Fire and Chrysanthemum, and there's another card soon, uh, I'm looking a lot actually at Grand Inquisitor more so than I'm looking at Bosk. Although... Bosk's stat line is the much more appealing of the two because he comes out earlier and actually is bigger. But um, there's a lot of these units that synergize so well with Grand Inquisitor's reading ability. And we'll see if we can kind of crack him next set. All right, Hylobon Enforcer is a one cost villain blue card. It's a one four, has grit and bounty draw card. This is like the Stormbike Pursuer, except it costs one less, but it has like the downside bounty. I don't even think Stormbite Pursuer is very good. Uh, I think it's like an interesting card in like maybe Krennic decks. Um, I don't think this is really interesting in any deck because it's like too much of a, like the idea of these one cost cards being good is that they offer value immediately. And this guy does not offer any value immediately. He's a one four. Uh, you need to like work to make him good. And by the time you made him good, he's gonna die and give your opponent a card. I'm mostly staying away from this. All right, Freetown Backup, two cost, hero green. It's a one four. On attack, give another friendly unit plus two plus two for this phase as a smuggle for four. So 
it's an it's not a aggressive stat line it's a pretty defensive stat line but uh he's gonna come in and start buffing your other units uh i wish he could buff himself on attack but that would probably be too cracked he'd, he'd attack as a three six every turn um but uh as is not having any relevant aggro traits on him right he's fringe so so far we're not seeing any synergy for fringe uh, i don't see this really you were like wanting to replace rebel synergy in most of the aggro decks right now for him the smuggle is interesting right like most of the value of this card is his buff effect so he, he, he has the stat line to potentially survive into another turn even if you smuggle him later in the game uh but it, it, it's just slow right because it needs to attack first it's not a particularly good attacker and then it needs to buff something else and then that something else needs to like survive an action to get payoff from this ability uh i'm mostly a little low on this although like it having smuggle makes me makes me a little more interested all right Django, Django fat four cost red villain card it is a three six oh grand inquisitor you needed another friend and you got one so again another stat line that just screams grand inquisitor to me um, it has while attacking a unit with bounty, this unit gets plus three plus zero oh, and overwhelm. So again, we look at that red free bounty. You put it on something. This can attack that something for six with overwhelm. You're gonna splash a bunch of damage. That guilt target's gonna trigger. It's gonna deal more damage to their base. Oh, and when this unit attack and defeats a unit, you draw a card. I like him, kind of in general, even without like the bounty stuff because. 3-6 is decent stat line. You're going to want to kill units. Usually you'll use him to like pick off 3-3s three and stuff, draw cards. Grand Inquisitor obviously can ready him the turn he comes into play. But the real big benefit here is that bounty. Him attacking as a 6 power unit, potentially on the third turn of the game. Splashing a bunch of damage. You know, like, you used that bounty, the guild target. It was card disadvantage for you because it was... You know, like you spent a card to deal damage to their base, but this guy's going to give you that card back whenever he kills something. I think between this and Chrysanthemum and the Punishing Fire, those are all incredibly powerful cards. And they, on top of that, they all synergize really well with bounties. That I'm looking at those, I'm looking at Guild Target the Red Bounty, and I'm waiting for another bounty that I really want to play, which so far I have not seen. There's the yellow one that we reviewed in the first preview, Wanted, which gives you two resources back. It is also free, so it's a little interesting. And that's actually one I'd probably most want to revisit uh, once I start actually playtesting these cards. And then we've got the, the blue one that costs one that heals. We've got the green one that ramps. Um, I swear, I think there was one more. Uh, I'm <laughs> drawing blanks on it right now. But... Um, for the most part, I am not like not super high on the other bounties other than the red one, but uh, I expect there will be more. And e either with like Bosk for the double triggers or Grand Inquisitor because every unit that's good <laughs> that's been reviewed just has like this giant health pool and three attack. So it's just like, oh, Grand Inquisitor, this is what we were waiting for. Uh, very excited to test all that stuff all right modded cohort is a four cost green hero card it's a two four it has ambush and raid two so this is a little bit of like escort skiff right escort skiff is a four four ambush conditional ambush this is a two four ambush but it ambushes as a four four uh because of the raid two so it's more consistent but less upside because then on defense this is still just a two four you know like we talked about uh the boba fett leader so in there, this would come in and ambush as a 5-4, and that's like really the only place I could see this potentially seeing play, because otherwise I think it's just not enough. All right, Boba Fett's armor is a two cost yellow upgrade, gives plus two plus two, attaches to a non-vehicle. If attached unit is Boba Fett, and damage would be dealt to him, prevent two of that damage. So Boba Fett, we've got a couple leaders now, and there's a unit, but mostly I think if you're gonna do this, for the damage prevention you're putting in on the leaders. This can prevent repeated sources of damage, right? It's when he attacks into a unit, when a unit attacks into him, even when it's like some, like 
damage based events like open fire or overwhelm barrage right all that you're preventing two damage it's gonna make him kind of a brick wall i get that uh i think though like i it's weird that like i'm gonna compare this a little bit to academy training academy training is the green upgrade that gives plus two plus two but has no text most of the time i feel like that's what this is um like i get that it makes boba almost immortal in a way but the thing is, like, this does kind of, like, clunk your turn a little bit and make you much more all-in on your leader. And Boba, a lot of the time, doesn't really need that much help. Like, he himself, a lot of time, is either getting removed by, like, events, if there's, like, if they're, they're trying to clean your board, uh, things like Entrench to lock him down, Super Laser Blast later to remove him. Uh, there's decks that don't really try to interact with him because they're trying to aggro you out. So they're that it's not this is too slow really to mess with that. Um, I think <laughs> I'm having a hard time rating this or like even really thinking about it. I th I will definitely try it and see like oh like do the games line up where like you put the you like waste a little bit of time to put this on your leader and then now you're using that leader either to like clean up the board or just like attack face and then your opponent's like oh i guess like i can never kill this with any of my units and now i just lose because the only way i was going to interact with your boba leader was through combat damage or like through like overwhelming barrage plus something else or like i was going to darth vader ambush this and now my darth vader only hits him for three um all that is real and i think this is interesting and like there's times where i would even play, think be like maybe i should be playing academy training in boba fett or something or like this can be played in mono yellow which doesn't have the option to play academy training uh i just think like mostly the upside here is that it's like a, a plus two plus two upgrade for your leader uh which specifically in like the mono yellow boba deck is actually something that you might want to consider playing uh, and then the damage prevention is a really nice bonus and might be way more impactful than I think it's going to be like that. I just am having a little bit of a hard time, like thinking about like how this games are going to play out where you, you play this on your leader and, uh, then your opponent just like really has no idea how to win the game anymore because they had to kill Boba and now they can't with through any normal means. And he's just going to like walk over them by dealing six to their base for a couple turns. Um, Oh yeah, it works in the green one too, right? <laughs> There's a new Boba leader, uh, but mostly uh, we're going to worry about the five cost Boba right now because he is a menace. All right, I know this one was very long. I uh, hope you made it to the end. I will try to definitely make the next spoiler videos a bit shorter. I was just waiting for like a big dump of cards to kind of start my analysis. Uh, I've caught up now did two very long videos they're going to be releasing uh this one's going to release shortly after the one that i did uh most recently so now that we're there uh hopefully we get videos a little quicker and yeah i appreciate it uh if you watch please uh like subscribe to the channel let me know what you think of the cards uh and yeah till next time take care